Good evening, everybody. You all know me as Mary Bingham, the nine times great granddaughter of Sarah Wilds. And you also probably know that before she married John Wilds, Sarah's maiden name was Averill. And I would like to tell a story about what happened to the Averill family in 1638. In fact, to be precise, June 1st, 1638 which started out like any other day for William and Abigail a Averill, Sarah's mother and father, and her six siblings when they were living in Ipswich, Massachusetts Bay Colony. The day started out as a beautiful, bright, clear spring day. And they had no idea what was to befall the entire community. But anyways, going back to the morning, Abigail would arise at the crack of dawn, descend from the upstairs chamber where the entire family slept, light the smoldering embers in the hearth left from the previous evening, then awaken her family before preparing the morning porridge. Everyone ate their breakfast and moved the necessary furniture to the walls to clear the space for spinning wheels, butter churns, cheese presses, and the like. William headed off to the surrounding three-acre lot or traveled to the other common land he was granted by the town to do what was necessary to sustain his family. At noon, William returned home for the main meal of the day before returning back to his work in the fields. An hour later, or actually um, accounts differ. It, some people say it was one o'clock. Some people say it was more like three o'clock when a rumbling was heard by people who had the gift of hearing the most subtle sounds from a long distance away. That changed drastically within what might seem seconds for William. He, like many others, was alarmed by the thunderous sound which suddenly approached and looked around to see from where it came. None too soon, William probably dropped his tools and ran at whiplash speed, maybe tripping and falling a few times, to anywhere where other men might be gathered, or if he was near his home, he might have run for safety there. Abigail had her hands full. There was no time for fear. She had to get her children to safety. William Jr., Sarah's brother, was probably with his father, but the rest of the gang was most likely with Abigail, including 11-year-old Sarah. The house probably shook so violently that the top of the chimney most likely hit either the house or pounded the garden nearby, creating an even more horrific volume of sound to that of the quake itself. How scary for them. This was something beyond their control. Therefore, William and Abigail believed the catastrophe was an act of God. What other explanation was there? Superstition was an integral part of the Puritan belief system. The initial earthquake, which would register no lower than 6.5 using today's Richter scale, lasted four horrifying minutes. The community lived on edge for quite some time as the atmosphere remained unstable for 20 days. The emotional and social impact lasted for years to come. The Averills, along with everyone living in Massachusetts Bay and beyond, would refer to their personal experiences as taking place either before or after the great quake. The summers prior to the quake produced normal harvests. The summers for a few years after the quake were unseasonably cool, producing early frosts so that the corn would not ripen, and of course, the other fruits and vegetables. That crops could not be harvested was a danger to the welfare of every family, including the Averills. Thank you very much for listening.